This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. Why we use per units in power systems part 2C. In this video we will demonstrate another advantage of using per units in power systems. Now let's start with the basics. In order to perform power system analysis in power systems having one or more than one transformer which usually is the case we have to convert a transformer into its equivalent circuit referring to either the primary side or the secondary side of the transformer. There are formulas to achieve this such as the transformer trend ratio, voltage formula, impedance formulas, etc. Impedances on primary side should be multiplied by the square root of the turns ratio to give the secondary side impedance. We have to find the leakage reactants and magnetizing currents as well. However, when a transformer is transformed into per units equivalent, the need for tedious calculations performed to refer the transformer to either the high voltage side or the low voltage side is eliminated. The magnetizing currents are neglected and even there is no requirements to calculate impedance on different sides individually. Let's see how this is made easy. Consider a transformer drawn like the one below. Now we know that to find Z2 referred to the primary side, the formula is this. Z2 is equal to the number of turns on the secondary side divided by the number of turns on the primary side squared, which is n over 1 squared, times Z1, which is the impedance on the primary side. That will give us n squared times Z1. Next, we calculate the per unit impedance of Z1. Z1 PU is equal to Z1 over Z1 base, which is equal to Z1 over V1 base divided by I1 base. And that is equal to Z1 times I1 base divided by V1 base. And as we substitute the value of Z2, we get Z2 PU is equal to Z2 divided by Z2 base. And that is equal to Z2 divided by V2 base over I2 base. And that is equal to Z2 times I2 base over V2 base. And that is equal to N squared times Z1 times I2 base over V2 base. We know that the formula for transformers that relate turns, voltage, voltages and currents is equal to 1 over n is equal to v1 base over v2 base which is equal to i2 base over i1 base. See there's an inverse there. And substituting these values in the equations of z2 per unit we get z2 per unit is equal to n squared times z1 times i2 base over v2 base. And that is equal to n squared times z1 times i1 base over n times 1 1 over n times v1 base. And we simplify this to get simply Z2 per unit is equal to Z1 times I1 base over V1 base. Hence, we prove that the per unit impedance of primary and secondary side are equal in magnitude. This means that calculating per unit impedances of either side is enough to analyze a transformer. Now let's take an example from a book, Power System Analysis by John J. Granger, the 1994 edition. Example 2.5 states that a single transformer is rated 110 over 440 volts with a 2.5 kVA power rating. The leakage reactance measured from the low voltage side is 0.06 ohms. The question is determine the leakage reactance in per unit. Now the solution on the low voltage side is this. We have Z base which is equal to 110 volts squared divided by 2.5 times 10 to the third VA which is voltage squared over power. We get 4.84 ohms. Now the per unit ZPU is equal to 0 0.06 divided by 4.84 base and that is equal to 0 0.0124 per unit in terms of the leakage reactants. 
By doing so, this two step calculations, we know that ZPU on both sides, i.e. the low voltage side and the high voltage side is equal to 0.0124 PU. And because of our derivation early in the video, we know that if we calculate it by using the impedance referred from the high voltage side, the calculation would be lengthy, but results is exactly the same. This concludes that if we want to analyze a transformer, we would simply calculate the per unit impedance on either side of the transformer. In the next video, we will see the case of multiple transformers in power systems. Now, we hope that you have a continued interest in this topic and series as a student or professional. We also hope that you find this content useful and enlightening. Please consider subscribing to generalpack.com and becoming our patron at patreon.com slash generalpack.